Speaking of things that are for me and my show, our next segment is fake TED Talks. Can you go ahead and switch? There we go. These are, of course, TED Talks that are dumb and made up and about stupid things by stupid people. Will you please welcome our first fake TED Talker, the stupid Travis McElroy. Hi everybody, I only have five minutes and I can talk for hours about this, so I'm gonna jump right in. Um, who here knows about fan theories? Okay, pretend like, pretend like none of you do. Who here knows about fan theories? Oh yeah, okay, great. So let me tell you about fan theories. There are, what a fan theory is, is the idea of something that's not explicitly stated in a show, a movie, or book, or whatever, and the fans theorize about it, that's where it gets the name. Yeah, yeah thank you. <laughs> I'm glad you guys are all with me. Please pay attention, I didn't write this down. So, in my book, there are two kinds of fan theories. There are the subtextual and the hypertextual. And a hypertextual fan theory is not necessarily supported by anything said or written, but rather that when you line up events, facts, whatever, you're like, this makes sense, so much sense in fact that I choose to believe it. For example, uh, when Frozen came out, there were people who said, um, what if Elsa and Anna's parents are also Tarzan's parents and the shipwreck is them being shipwrecked on the island, it makes complete sense, right? And then subtextual is like, oh, you know what, they mentioned this, they said this thing, and it's kind of in there, so what if this was true, right? My favorite example of this, also from Frozen, is uh, there's a fan theory that the trolls make Hans bad yes. and that he has not been bad the whole time but during Fixer Upper where they say get the fiance out of the way and the whole thing will be fixed and then the next time you see Hans he turns right but what I want to talk about is uh, neither of those two <laughs> hypertextual or subtextual but rather a fan theory is just so true that they just haven't written it yet. And that is that Olaf is a Horcrux. <laughs> and this is my fan theory. And I'm not even joking when I say how true it is, because I have two daughters, six and three, and so I have watched every Frozen thing multiple times. Yeah, I mean Frozen 1, Frozen 2. I also mean like Frozen Fever, Frozen A Lost Adventure. I also mean Lego Frozen. I mean every Frozen thing. And Olaf contains a part of Elsa's soul. It's just true. <laughs> Olaf, okay. Olaf is created during letting go. What she's letting go of is her hope of a normal life. Normal and a close relationship with her sister, right? So then, whoosh, she creates Olaf during Let It Go, and then what does Olaf do? Well, he wants to be friends with everyone, and he's immediately drawn to Anna, and he remembers his name. He remembers he likes warm hugs, just like the game they play, but that's not all. That's not all. <laughs> In Let Go Frozen, when the Aurora Borealis happens, <laughs> Olaf says, the sky is awake, Anna. Do you remember? But she didn't say that to Olaf. She said, fucking Elsa. <laughs> oh! Olaf contains Elsa's memories. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah! In Frozen 2, when Elsa, let's say it, dies, Olaf, guys, it's the magic. Is it? Is it a fucking magic? Or is it that? It's part of her soul and that's why she comes back. Because she pulls that part of the soul out of Olaf and it brings her back. And then she's able to recreate Olaf. What? You all just went silent because I'm fucking right. Thank you! 
and spits truth bombs. <laughs> <laughs>